All right, um, today's topic for RM scripting is going to be land versus terrain preferences. So this map is Crater Lake. Many people who play the game competitively would consider this to be an unbalanced map uh, because most of the time, uh, this central island that contains tons of gold is not exactly in the center of the map. And that makes things unbalanced since for the early game, it'll mess up players who are close to the island because they're going to struggle with fishing. And for the late game, players who are really far away are going to have a much harder time gaining access to the gold. So, as for the code of this map, you can see how it's created. First, the inland sea is created as a land with specified borders. And then the middle island here is created also as a land inside of the sea that was created before it. And so, when you uh, create... Uh, smaller lands inside of larger ones to take up the same space, this kind of thing happens. You may ask whether or not there's a better way to make these kinds of maps to make them more balanced. And there are other ways of making these kinds of maps, and they all have their pros and cons. Uh, we'll call Crater Lake Method 1, which uses land statements to build the features of the map. So now for another example. This map is called Golden Ghost. Um, like the previous map, it also has gold in the center and separated from the outside by a different terrain. Um, in this case, it's ice instead of water. Uh, so the concept of the map is relatively similar, but the construction method, however, is quite different. So looking at the code for this map, uh, you can see that in the land generation section, uh, the middle land has been created as the ice terrain, but that's it. Um, aside from the player lands, this is the only other land statement in the whole map. So how is the middle terrain created? So if we scroll down into the terrain generation section of the map, you can see that the middle has been created as a terrain statement with a spacing from the outside terrain that varies based on map size. Um, this makes uh, the middle terrain much more consistently equidistant to all the players on the map. Um, it's not perfect, but it's much different from the previous example. And the downside to this method is that we cannot um, elevate or place cliffs on this middle terrain without also affecting the ice in between. You see, I mentioned before that elevation and cliffs come before terrains, so they're going to be created on that before this terrain is even created, and the game won't know how to differentiate between those two terrains. So comparing to the last example, which was Crater Lake, where the middle land is elevated, uh, that's not possible on the map you just saw. So the benefit of this means a more central location uh, of the middle land on the map. And the side effect of this is losing the ability to differentiate between the middle and the in-between terrains. And we'll call that method two. Now, method three is simply the reverse of this. So this map is called Caldera Nomad. Uh, this similarly has a middle, an in-between, and an outside terrain. Um, looking at the code for this map, we see that in the land generation section, uh, the player lands are the only land statement in the entire script. Uh, the base terrain of the map is the grass, that's the in-between terrain. And down in the terrain section, we can see that the outside water has been created similarly to the last map with different spacings for each map size. So now instead of being unable to differentiate the middle and the in-between terrains with respect to cliffs and elevation, now we are able to control the middle land independently and the outside in and in-between terrains are the ones we lose control over. So these are the three different methods of creating these types of maps. All the concepts are relatively similar it's just the minor details that may sway your decision to use one method above the other. So that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.